Hi, welcome to Community Hotline at Home. I'm your host, Monica Weitzel. Today, we'll be talking to Donate Life Northwest. After a steep decline amid the coronavirus COVID-19 pandemic, organ transplants are starting to pick back up in Oregon. Working locally on behalf of regional recovery agencies and transplant centers, Donate Life Northwest is the voice of the 2.6 million Oregonians who have said yes to organ, eye, and tissue donation. Coming in August, National Minority Donor Awareness Month is a collaborative effort with national organizations and underrepresented communities to empower more people to save lives. Here with us today is Amy Adelman, Director of Education and Outreach at Donate Life Northwest. Thanks for joining us today, Amy. Yeah, thanks for having me. That's a pleasure. So Donate Life Northwest started in 1975 as the Oregon Donor Program. Correct. And since then, you've um, had some very successful education campaigns that have really ended up saving a number of lives. Because, uh, But the, the need for transplants continues to grow, and I believe the need outpaces the number of donors available. So what are you focusing on now as far as education? goes to increase or organ donors in Oregon and Southwest Washington. Yeah, so we have a number of initiatives. You know, it's an interesting time um, with the pandemic. Um, and we've had to kind of shift the way that we're doing things just like um, everyone else. And so um, really, we're focused on, you know, how do we change outreach and still you know, do community outreach without actually being in the community. It's a little bit difficult, right? Mm -hmm. um, so we're looking at ways um, that we can do that virtually. And really, what's really important is connecting with our community. Um, our community is just an amazing um, group of people from all different aspects of life, right? So we have recipients and donor families and living donors and supporters, um, and you know, registered donors are most important people. Um, and so how do we reach those people without actually going out into the community? Um, so we've done some unique things. We've done, um, all of our trainings are now virtual um, and we do a monthly happy hour with our volunteers that has been really fun. So kind of like everyone else is doing their happy hour, we're doing that with our volunteers. <laughs> I love um, that. Yeah, it's been really fun. And one really unique thing that's come out of that is we've brought together volunteers that have never met that are from all different aspects of the state, right? So you might have someone in Eastern Oregon meeting someone from Portland or someone from Portland meeting someone in Medford. And so it really brings our community together. Um, so that has been really fun. Um, we're also, you know, looking at ways that we can provide that education. So with our youth education, um, not being able to go into schools, we've created virtual resources online. Um, and so there, there's lots of different things that we're doing. Um, but it's also been difficult um, because with COVID, um, we did see a real decrease in donation. Um, especially in March and, and some of April because um, there were just really wasn't the resources and the ability to do the testing that we needed to do and make sure that that transplants were safe um, right. and so donation and transplant uh, definitely declined for a period of time and that was really hard um, but now we're really seeing it pick back up um, and we have a better understanding of COVID-19, um, more testing available so we can make sure that those, um, those donations are safe to transplant. Um, and it's really been a, a really a, a big learning experience, um, but also ability for us to come together um, as a whole community. So all of our partner agencies, so the eye bank, our tissue bank, um, the you know organ procurement organization and our transplant centers to you know come together and figure out how we can work together and also educate the community it's really right. important Cause, well. yeah because you all you pretty much all have to work together to figure out the best way to do that right to reach this to reach the community is um signing up on your um, oregon driver's license still the primary way people register for organ donations is that yeah, that is correct. Um, so 99% of our registrations do come from the DMV, um, which was also a bit of a challenge during this time because the DMV wasn't open. Um, right. 
And so we had to kind of come up with ways that we can register um, more people. Um, and so there are many ways that you can register, not just by going to the DMV. Um, you can register online at donatelifenw.org. Um, we can mail you a paper form. Um, there's also a medical ID app um, on the iPhone, or you can actually register as well. On that app, you do have to be over 18 to do that. Okay. Um, but so there's many different ways that people can register, and I don't think a lot of people realize that. Um, and that's something that's really important um, that, you know, you don't have to wait until you go to the DMV. You can right. register anywhere. And it's also really important to talk with your family about that decision so they understand your decision as well. Right. And when you talk to them, maybe you can help educate them and get the whole family signed up. I mean, that's what Definitely. we did in our family. I think I signed up when, when your organization first started and, and our whole family right. signed up. So, you know, it's, it's a good way to do it. Uh -huh. You mentioned something about um, living donations. Mm -hmm. I know the regular donations um, that, you know, that I originally signed up for were for were I to pass away, then, you know, I have given, you know, the authorization mm -hmm. to use my organs yeah. uh, to save somebody's life, which I can't think of anything that would be, you know, what better thing to do, right? Mm -hmm. But the living donations are a little bit different. Is that right? Can you explain to me how that works? Yeah. So, um, when you sign up uh, with the DMV or on your driver's license or online, um, you are signing up for deceased donation, right? So um, if you die in a manner that donation would be possible um, and you are registered, um, we can move forward with that donation process. Living donation, um, obviously, it can happen when you are still alive. <laughs> um, and there are a few things that can be donated, not nearly as many um, as with deceased donation, but um, most commonly people know about kidney, right? Mm -hmm. So you have two kidneys, you only need one to live. Um, and so you can donate a kidney, you can donate a portion of your liver. Um, your liver is a very interesting organ, it actually grows back. Um, oh. So it takes, it takes a little bit of time, about 12 months or so, to um, have that, uh, that liver grow back to its original size. Um, and then you can also uh, donate a very small portion of your lung. It's very rare and not done nearly as often anymore. Um, you can also donate a very small portion of your intestine. Um, and then obviously blood and bone marrow is also something that you can donate. All the cost of donation actually comes from the recipient side. So most of the time the recipient's insurance will cover the costs oh, wow. um, okay. of the donor. So there is never any cost um, for the living donor as far as the donation process is concerned. That's all covered on the recipient's insurance. So if I were interested in doing a living donation, I would um, go through all that process. I'm thinking if we went through all those tests, if there was anything wrong with me, they'd probably find it, wouldn't they? Would they tell yeah. me I mean, if they found something seriously wrong with me? You know, mm -hmm. maybe I'm maybe I'm doing a favor to myself by by going through something like that. You actually are. So you get kind of a a free physical exam, yeah. a very very thorough yeah. physical exam. So you know, if they're if they were to find um, type two diabetes or high blood pressure. Um, those are things that would rule you out um, right, to be a right. living donor. And then you would find that out, right? Um, so that can actually be a benefit. You know, it's a very extensive process and people learn so much about their health. Um, I've heard that from uh, many donors that, you know, they feel like they're actually healthier after becoming a living donor than they were before because they had to you know, go through so much to make this donation happen. And then they're more aware of their body as right. well. Right. right. Um, right. And then, you know, moving forward, they've actually, you know, they're healthier because of it. Um, they're healthier. And they've, they've saved a life, which, you know, is just a tremendous thing. I can't even imagine having yeah. that. Feeling. So I think it's a, a really great thing. It's um, pretty incredible. Mm -hmm. No, I've read that the, uh, that the number of minority donors is, is not nearly enough to cover the mm -hmm. So uh, specifically African Americans, um, Latino, and, and, and others are, um, mm -hmm. that they're, they, they don't sign up as, in as many numbers, and there's probably a lot of reasons for that. Is there um, an effort made to try to increase those numbers of, of donors? 
Yeah, so we actually have a National Minority Donor Awareness Month coming up, um, and that happens in, throughout the month of August. Um, it's a national campaign um, with Donate Life America, MoTab, um, and um, uh, other various organizations across the nation, really trying to create a concerted effort to educate um, our community and our, our nation about uh, about this exact topic. Um, so minorities uh, make up about sixty percent of the national waiting list, mm -hmm. um, and you know those are individuals who are waiting for a transplant, um, and so more proportionally affects. Um, uh, Blacks, Latinos, uh, Asian and Pacific Islander, Native Americans, all of those communities are more so affected by transplant and the need um, for a transplant. And so it's really important that um, we educate the community about this and encourage more individuals um, to register. Okay, I think it's a, that's a good cause right there. Yeah, but definitely. I know that you've overcome a lot of barriers as far as um, fear in people and misunderstandings about the, uh, about how this all works. Are there certain barriers that you still find exist that um, have been really difficult to overcome? And is there something, anything the public can do to help with this? Yeah. I mean, I think there are a lot of myths and misunderstandings. Um, honestly, a lot of it comes from Hollywood, right? We see those movies or TV shows that, that try to portray donation um, in kind of a scary um, or more extravagant than it really is. Um, and so one of the things that I think we hear most common is by having um, that on your license that people won't try to save your life, right? The doctor will look at that on your license and see that you're registered and they'll just be like, well, forget it. I'm not going to try to save their life. Which, we both know, right? <laughs> that isn't true. Um, but the doctors uh, have to take an oath to save your life. And, they do. They, yeah. they take a Hippocratic oath. Um, and the doctors that are trying to save your life are completely separate um, from the medical professionals who are working on the donation process. And the reason we keep them separate is just for that reason, because the doctor that is trying to save your life, that is their job right? Mm -hmm. Their job is to save your life. They aren't going to take your organs and they're actually, they're not even going to look at your driver's license. Okay. <laughs> um, and so, you know, their sole focus is to save, to save your life. And then the other team, the health professionals or the organ procurement organizations, they're really working um, to try to save somebody else's life. So once they know, and once they've looked um, to see if you're registered, they actually access our registry um, and they look to see if that person is registered and then they have, you know, the, the ability to move forward with the donation process. Um, okay. and so they're really separate processes and that is intentional, right? Um, because it is really important that we keep them separate and that the intention is to save that person's life. I appreciate that very good explanation because I've run across that before and it was kind of mm -hmm. hard to explain. Uh, in, yeah correctly and you did a good job of that well thank you um, i've had a little practice yeah i bet you have <laughs> um, my last question is is about volunteers you mentioned that you mm -hmm. have volunteers and you do your happy hour with them do you still have a need for volunteers and what kinds of things would they do definitely so um you know we have a lot of volunteers and they're they're touched by um donation or transplant in some way and they play such an important part in our organization um especially now sharing stories is incredibly important um so you know doing things like this and, and being able to talk to organizations and educating them um, while incorporating stories is really important. So sharing your story is definitely a, a great way that volunteers can get involved and is an easy way. Um, they can contact me directly or they can visit our website. Um, also outreach. Um, so I know it's weird because we're not necessarily in the community, but there's some really interesting and unique community events happening in your local area. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a way that um, you can educate the public yourself. So you can contact us and we can send you some fun swag or educational materials and 
can um, you can get out into your community and find those events. A lot of them have turned virtual. Mm -hmm. um, and so there's like some kind of online component. And so we can work with you to um, figure out what you want to incorporate um, into that community event. And then just kind of like general office stuff that we need, we need help with um, to maintain and run, run our organization is a great way. Um, and then finally, um, we have a great program um, coming up. Um, we try to do it multiple times throughout the year. It's called Erase the Weight. It's a mentorship program um, for waitlisted uh, kidney patients um, to have a mentor and kind of help them through the process of finding a living kidney donor. So wow. if somebody has received a living kidney donor or a living kidney donation, um, or they have um, been a living donor themselves, they are eligible to become a mentor to a waitlisted patient and kind of help them through that process. Yeah. Um, so it's better to do it than somebody's been through it. Exactly. Yeah. And you know, you really you get to learn a lot going through that process and. Um, it can be very emotionally draining and to have that support through that process and to come up with new ideas to do outreach. You know, you talked earlier about, you know, oftentimes there's a call out to the community to try to, you know, find a living donor. Well, you can expand that community even more by connecting with your mentor or going on social media and our mentors kind of help you do that and help you walk through that process and figure out, you know, how am I going to find a living donor? Um, and what are some unique ways that, that I can do that? So that program in particular um, does that. Uh, you know, you talked about it can be a draining emotional experience. I can't even watch your videos on your website without getting choked mm -hmm. up. So it's, it's, yeah. a, it's a thing to do. Yeah. I, we have some really beautiful people who are part of our community and have been through so much and the fact that now they've come back to our organization yep. and want to give back and um, you know help educate other people um, and we have some really beautiful stories that we've been able to share um, because of that kind of kind of says it all doesn't it it does thank you thank you amy so much for sharing all this information today and i hope people will be encouraged to to go out and and uh, find out more about being a living donor or if they're not signed up to be a donor to do that and to help spread the word. So um, okay. we'll, we'll keep, keep trying to help do that. So thank you so much. Thank you. You're very welcome. And to all of you watching today, thank you for joining us. And uh, from all of us at Metro East, stay safe, stay healthy. Thank you.